Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Cap at Home in Gold Detroit. My name is Miss Allie and today, as you could probably have guessed, we are going to be making these awesome, beautiful flower crowns. Um, and you can use these as a way to celebrate Mother's Day or for Cinco de Mayo tomorrow or just because they're fun and awesome and they look really cool. So like I said, we're going to be making these awesome crowns these wearable things just from a few simple materials. So I am going to switch my camera over and we will get started. All right, and as I set up my camera here for a second, um, I want to take a moment to thank um, our sponsors here at Cap at Home, um, and that would be Goal Detroit, of course, as well as the College for Creative Studies. And I also want to give a shout out to um, the Detroit um, community, or the, I apologize, the Detroit um, Education Commission, as well as General Motors, who are helping us make these free live art tutorials happen every week. So thank you for joining me again this week. Like I said, my name is Miss Allie, and we are going to be making these super fun paper flower crowns. Now they look really complicated, but they're actually pretty easy to do, just with a few simple materials and a few steps here. So I'm going to set that over here. And what we are going to need today is a few pieces of paper. I have some nice, fun, bright colored paper here. Um, these aren't necessarily full sheets. Um, I just This is just what I had with me. I also like to grab some scraps as well because this can also be helpful. And um, one full sheet of paper or close to a full length paper um, of green is a good idea, but any color that you have will do. And then a pencil or a marker, glue stick, and some scissors. Um, you may also want to use some tape if or a stapler depending on how you would like to attach your crown when we get to that part. So let's get started. So part of the really cool thing about this paper flower crown, not only is it wearable, but it also sort of references Frida Kahlo, a Mexican Detroit artist um, who was known for having a lot of flower depictions in her portrait, so, and a lot of them in her hair, so it's kind of cool. We're kind of being inspired by her. Um, so the first thing we want to do is actually make a few of these flowers. Now, these look a little complicated, but they're actually really easy to do. So one thing I like to do is on one piece of paper, I like to draw out um, at least maybe one, two, or three different types of flowers. So I know I like doing this type of flower. You know, you could do something like that. You could do something simple, you know, just like five circles. You could also do something that looks more like this with... Um, these sort of triangle curve shapes. Um, so they can be different sizes as well. You could make a few. You can make a few smaller ones, maybe this size or normal size. And then maybe you make a few really big ones. I always think it's good to have at least a few small and a few big ones. So I say, you know, we make... We make a handful of them. So I used marker to draw mine just so you could see them, but I always recommend using pencil. And here's a trick. So I'm going to stack my paper together, have it all line up on one edge, and I'm actually going to cut them at the same time. So that way um, I know I'm going to get the same shape three times. And the benefit of using pencil, obviously you wouldn't see the marks, the marker part. You can always flip it over. Now, I have a few different colors here with me. Um, I had some pink and blue and green. Um, you can grab as many different colors of uh, color paper you want or have. You can also, you know, only use like white paper. Maybe you just want to do all different pinks or all different reds. So you could do it like that as well. It's totally up to you. And I have that cut out. And so if I take it apart, I now cut this flower three times, even though I only cut it once. And if I just flip that over, there we go. So you can do that a few times. I always recommend having about, I'm going to set those aside. I recommend having about hmm, 10 to 15 flowers, depending on 
how um, congested you want your flower crown to be. Now, on my example, I have a lot of them really close together, and I really fill up the crown all the way around. So I like making a lot of flowers, and then whatever I don't use, I um, can just save for another crown. If you know you're not, you're gonna maybe you're gonna only do it in one area, like towards the front, or maybe you're just um, maybe you only want to do a few of them. You don't have to make as many. So again, different shapes. And again, as many different colors as you have. These were just some. You can also use like scrap paper as well. So once you have all your flowers, so let's say I've so I've cut out, you know, six. Maybe I'm like halfway done. But just for the sake of this video, let's pretend that this is all my flowers. And I have some scrap paper. And what I like to do is take, you know, little little flowers. And I like to put little like dots or circles in the middle. So I might take a few of my scrap pieces of paper and do the same thing, like kind of line them up and then just cut out some circles. Again, I'm probably going to cut out a couple big ones and a couple smaller ones. And they don't have to be perfect. If you've ever seen a flower, they're not always perfect shapes. So you could have some circles here. Set those aside. You can do a couple smaller ones. Maybe I make a few like that. Again, I always cut them while they're on top of each other. So I have a few of those there. I got a few bigger ones. And I had a few left over from the last time. So here's a few of my, my circles. I have a few big ones here. I got a few small ones. And I like having different colors of those too so I can mix them up. And then the other thing you want to cut out um, is some leaves. So I have some scrap green paper, and you might want to cut out, you could do this again, I could take this green paper, this is a really light green, you can use any green that you want, I might fold it in half, draw my leaf shape, and then cut this. I sort of do it almost like a one-pointed raindrop shape. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, and I'm kind of pushing my scraps off to the side. So I have two leaf shapes. And I did happen to have a couple leaf shapes over here as well. So I have a handful of leaves, sort of like curved triangles. I have some circles, some big and small, and I have some flowers, which are also big and small and different shapes. So now what we want to do is combine them. So they sort of end up looking like this. So this is where our handy glue stick comes in. And we might take... Let's say I have this green one, and I think that this might look really awesome on top of it. So I'm going to take my glue stick, just put a dot of glue there, and I'm going to put it, make sure it's in the position I want, press it down really good, and then I'm going to find a middle dot to go in the middle. And I like that orange one. I think that's a good color. I'll put that down. I can set that aside. I could take another one. Maybe I use this green one. And maybe I want to use this pink dot in the middle. And I like that it's kind of big. You can cut it down if you feel like it's a little too big. But I actually think it's okay. I'm going to set that there. And then I might also use... I don't know. Maybe I'll take this little blue one. And sometimes I like to do two of them. So well, maybe I'll do another one inside. I think that looks cool. So you can layer different leaves, or you can add multiple circles in the middle, or, you know, you could just keep it plain with one, um, one flower and one circle in the middle. Another fun thing you can do is add a few little designs. So like I started to do here. So let's say this is my flower. I might say, you know, I feel like this flower needs a little swirl in the middle, or maybe it needs... Just, I don't know, just like a little funky design going around the, the center of the flower. So that could be cool, or maybe I want to add some dots. And then on the back flower, maybe I want to add a few lines in the background. I don't know, just kind of gives it some dimension there. 
just some silly little designs or patterns. I was using a black marker, but you could use any color that you want. Colored pencils, crayons, markers, anything. So let's say you can also do that for the leaves as well. So you could also just add, you know, this again just adds a little definition to the leaves. You know, something like that. So you don't have to. You can leave them plain, but that's just an option. So let's say I have all of my flowers together. I've done this, and I feel like I have enough flowers. I have about, mm, I don't know, 15 or so flowers. And I actually have a bunch already ready to go up here. Different sizes, shapes, colors. And it's cool to mix color combinations when you're making the flowers as well. So we have some, you know, orange, blue, and green. And we have orange, yellow, purple, blue, green, pink, pink, green, purple. So it's always fun to add as many different colors as you can. Again, if you only have white paper, you can also color your flowers in different colors. So let's say we have everything ready. We have all of our leaves together. We have all of our flowers made. Now we have to actually make the crown part. So this is where our big piece of paper comes in handy. So I have this like long strip of green paper. Um, if you have like a large piece of construction paper, you can fold it in half, one of those long ones. If you have a normal piece of construction paper, you can fold it into thirds. So either way, you're basically trying to get sort of like a strip of paper. So I'm going to go ahead. I had this piece. I folded it in half. This was like part of a large green construction paper piece. And so I just sort of have this strip. Now I have two. They're not perfect. That's okay. And sometimes I even think, you know, this might be even a little too long or a little too thick. I don't like to make them super thick, especially if you have a small head. I like to even cut a little bit more off. And that's okay. Again, I'm not using a ruler or anything. I'm just sort of eyeing it. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to set those aside. And I now have these two strips. And what I'm going to do is actually glue one side of them together. Again, you can use glue or tape or a stapler for this part. I'm going to glue. Set that down really good. So I have one very long strip of paper now. So what I actually like to do is hold it up to my head and see where it's going to overlap because I know this strip is really long. So I know that it's going to overlap right where I'm holding it. So I'm actually going to cut a little excess off because I feel like that's too much extra paper. And I know that it's going to overlap there at this point. So if you have a helper with you, that is always a good idea to ask them for help. Sometimes what I like to even do is fold the sides down to know exactly where it's going to overlap. So that way I can glue my flowers on flat and then take it and glue it. So I know it's going to be about there. I know there's about that much. And I keep those folded. So I can flip it over and I can actually start gluing my flowers on. So I like to, again, you have tons of different flowers and colors and shapes and combinations. I have lots of them here. I'm going to try and pull them all together here. Push away all my scraps. I have lots of different things. And I always start with like my bigger ones first. And I actually just start gluing. I don't usually lay them out first. You can if you want. I just sort of start. I'm like, okay, I really like that one. Or I feel like this color would look really cool next to that. And then, I, you know, I sort of put some kind of underneath a few others so they're sort of sticking out. Another cool thing you can do is take your, your flowers and bend the sides up a little bit. So it kind of gives them more dimension. They're almost a little bit more curved. And since it's paper, it's just going to bend really easily. It's almost like making a small crease, you know, like that. So that also helps to, like, make them stick up a little bit and makes it easier to layer a few of them. And, again, we want to throw in a, we wanna throw in a few of our, um, of our leaves as well. I always try and do the leaves more towards the back. Like, sort of like that. So I know it's kind of sticking up, but it's also behind a flower. And let's see, what other colors do we have here? Fold up 
some of these weren't folded there and so see how I'm just sort of starting to be like oh I think I like that or I don't like that type of thing I like this one I'm gonna grab this one see I'm trying to mix up some of the colors but in the end it's gonna look really cool so it doesn't really matter in the end, like I said, it doesn't really matter. You sort of just start putting them together. And I'm just kind of gluing right on here. I'm not doing it any specific sort of direction or way. And I make some of them kind of come off the, the band here. So some of them are sort of sticking up, some of them are sort of sticking off, and that's good. Sort of have some variety, like maybe I'll make two leaves kind of go next to each other here. And you can fill up as much or as little of it as you want. You could say, you know, I just want to do like the front part, or you could do all the way around. That's totally up to you. I like to fill up as much as I can, just because I made all these leaves, I might as well use them, right? In this part will take a few minutes, but it does look really cool once you start really getting everything in there. And I like to do some of the leaves going up, some of them going down. So sort of like that. I'm starting to get some cool, some cool layering here. And like I said, I try and fill up as much of it as I can, but I also want to leave a little bit of it open towards the end part because that's, I know where I'm going to glue it. And you can see where the different color combinations and the bright colors and stuff will look like really cool all together. Actually, I might use this one over here. I know I'm sort of getting off the page here. So much of it I want to show. And like if you can see, I'm kind of like intertwining a few of them. That's good. And I might do like one more, one or two more leaves over there. And then I might say, you know, that looks pretty full to me. It doesn't have to be, you know, totally full. Like I said, I leave a little bit of space towards the end there. Make sure everything's really glued down pretty good. And I might say, okay, I think that looks really good. And I think my, a few, a few of these little, Flowers in the front needed a little bit of design here. So I'm going to help them out. And that's okay. You can always go back and say, oh, I feel like this needed this or this needs a little bit of a little touch here and there. I always like doing these simple little designs because I feel like it really just brings something. It's like another layer. Small little details. Can't, didn't hurt anyone. All right, so I would say this looks really good. Totally full. I have a little bit left on the edges here. So now what I want to do is, again, I'm going to hold this up to my head. If you have someone around you um, to help you out with this, that's always a good idea. I know that it overlaps here. And so I'm going to just go ahead and add a little bit of glue. Being careful not to move or adjust my fingers do it again on the other side again if you have tape or a stapler that is always a good um, thing to do and once you feel like it's secure then you can put it on put it on over your head and wear your fabulous crown so you can look like
this and wear your fabulous flower crown. And so, like I said, again, you can wear your fabulous crown or you can give it to um, a friend or you can wear it for Cinco de Mayo. You can give it to your mom, have it wear it as her Mother's Day crown coming up for this um, Sunday. So they're really awesome, really easy to make. And you can see how making a lot of flowers at once, you can end up making like two or three crowns at a time. So that is how you make a paper flower crown. Now, right before we're done, we want to make sure that we clean up our area. Now, um, when your crown is done, you will probably have some scraps left. So I always like to save my usable scraps, put them in a pile, make sure my glue stick and marker, if I had one, have the cap. If I have some extra flowers, I might save them for another crown. And any of these really little scraps, I don't really need, so I'm probably gonna throw those away. And I'll keep all my other scraps. And once you're done, then you can wear and show off your fabulous flower crown. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, make sure to, if you make your own flower crown, I'd love to see it, so make sure to post it um, if you end up making one. Um, like I said, wear it for the holiday tomorrow. Give it to your um, mom for as a Mother's Day crown. Whatever you decide to do. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for joining me again. My name is Miss Allie, and today we made our fabulous paper flower crowns. Um, and make sure to join us not only again next Tuesday. You can hang out with me every Tuesday at 4 p.m., but also on Wednesday and Thursday at 4 p.m. for more fabulous videos. And if you missed any of our videos, make sure to check them out on YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook. So thanks for hanging out with me this Tuesday. I'll see you next week and have fun making your own flower crown.